What is going on? What is the deal? What is happening out here? You know, I spent the better part of my professional life working outdoors, on golf courses, learning the golf course industry, so on and so forth. Ended my career as a manager at one of the most prestigious golf properties in all of North America. I'm not going to say the name of it, but at this point in time, it has seven golf courses, 18 whole golf courses. It has a horse ranch. It has walking trails. It has a health spa. It has all sorts of amenities. It is a huge, booming golf community, lifestyle community, as they call it. They have their own security and everything. You cannot get in there unless you know the secret handshake, so to speak. And I worked there from 2009 until about 2015. Loved it. It was fun for me. I mean, very stressful, of course, near the end, but but very fun. By the way, folks, you are listening to For the Quantum Grammar Shoot podcast, the only podcast of its kind on the interwebs. I'm your host, Colin Jason Ivey, Matthew Colin Glass. In this podcast, I'm going to be discussing topics and uh, subjects as viewed through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar, the wonderful grammar technology brought to the public by the late Colin David Ivey Colin Miller in 1988. So what's the point of me saying this? The point of me saying this is that everything that we used on those golf courses was to make the grass green, to achieve a certain type of condition of the grass for certain putting speeds. And, you know, everything was about the grass quality, fertilizers, irrigation, everything. All right. Chemicals. Yeah, I mean, you had to have a special license to get the chemicals that we had. You had to have a special key to get into those vaults, to get into those chemicals, to use them. Um, And we used gas and diesel-powered engines. I cannot imagine what it would be like if folks on those golf courses were forced to use electric equipment, I just can't imagine what that would be like. I I can't fathom it. Because I'm telling you right now, in my locality, where, where I'm located right now, there is a county, or actually a borough, we'll call it a, no, a township, a township not too far from me that has mandated for the summer months, whatever that is, I don't know, June through September, June through August, no one in that township is to use a gas-powered leaf blower. Meaning if you get caught using a gas-powered leaf blower, mixed gas, of course, You'll be fined. What's the reasoning for this? This is, this is, I've taken about four minutes to get to this point. What's the reason for this? What, what's the volition behind this? The volition behind this is that we got to do something for the environment. We have to take charge and go green. Folks, have you ever heard a bigger pile of horse shit? Have you ever seen a bigger pile of horse shit? What in any of that makes any kind of sense? Like Chrysler, Dodge, stopping production of the eight-cylinder gas-powered muscle cars Challenger, um, you know, the Hellcats, the Scat Packs. 
the Chargers, the Durangos, stopping production of that. And now they're going into hybrid stuff. Why? You don't hear anybody slowing down air travel. You don't hear the government saying, all right, we, we're really concerned about these emissions. You All you folks out there that have all these private airliners and private jets and just go wherever you want to with these jets that are putting out these quote-unquote emissions, you can't do that anymore. We're not going to allow you to do that anymore. We're going to ban all private travel like that so that we can cut down on emissions. Because I'm sure that <laughs> a private jet airliner puts out a little bit more, you know, poison into the atmosphere than a freaking leaf blower. Just throwing that out there. So what's going on here, folks? What do you see happening here? Is it fair? Of course it's not fair. Nothing in the system is fair. Nothing in the system is designed to be fair. The system is designed to benefit those who have money. And if you don't have money, your life is just going to get harder. Unless, unless you educate yourself, you cultivate your knowledge, and you learn how to navigate through these things safely and peacefully. And Rest assured, I mean, no matter what happens, there are things that some folks are going to have to do without. You got to pick your battles. The point of this podcast is to maybe open your eyes to what's happening here. The whole thing with the electric car thing. What, what, what's, what's really happening there? This whole thing with like... Uh, a family member of mine went into a doctor's office the other day and instead of filling, filling out paperwork, they were handed an iPad. Everything is electronic. They have to fill out their information online. Their signature goes in electronically. What happened with the, uh, I'll say it, who cares, the COVID thing. Even court hearings turned into virtual court hearings. Look up that word virtual once and see what the fiction tells you it means. So things are being directed. And yes, in a way, in a more convenient direction in a lot of cases, because having everything, everything, your whole life, your, your, your ledger, your uh, uh, scheduling book, your bank accounts, your appointments, everything in one little device that fits in your pocket, like everything. You can access every single thing you need to and email it out wherever you want to and at the touch of a, you know, touch screen. How, that's very convenient. Wow. Who doesn't like convenience? On the other hand, there's a double-edged sword to that. Control. Because what happens if that disappears? What happens if your phone gets stolen? What happens if the internet goes down and there is no more internet? If there is no more internet. All you crypto currency folks out there who are proponents of this imaginary uh, system of value. What happens if there is no internet? If there is no, number one, electricity, and number two, there is no internet. What, what your cold storage device, is that going to have any use to you? If you have nothing to plug it into? If you have no way to access it? It'd be like putting all your gold and silver in a safe, millions and millions of dollars and an earthquake happens and it gets buried 100 miles below the surface. How, and you can't access it. What good is it? You can't get to it. So it's the same thing with your data on your phone. 
the more you rely on something that is electronic, something of convenience like that, the less surety you have that you are going to have, that you're going to maintain stewardship of that or control of that, to use a fiction term, control of that. It can be taken away from you, just like the, the electronic cars. Not only are we going to see some interesting things 10 years from now, if everybody has an electronic car and a snowstorm happens and an accident happens and you're stuck on the road for five hours and it's freezing and you got to keep your car running to keep the heat on, but your battery dies, then what happened? What happens then? What happens then? Do you have an extra battery you carry with you that you can plug in? Like you can carry an extra emergency thing of gas in your car? I mean, is that how you would uh, do that? I don't know. Or, (laughs) which I mean, you can look at these smart cars now. Or you can have your car shut down. Someone else can shut your car down. Maybe there will be a time in the future when you, I don't know, maybe you're, you're um, not making, you're, you're having a credit card dispute with someone, all right? You feel like you're being screwed over by a credit card, but they have access to this or that or the third, so they can, uh, instead of reaching into your bank account to take your money away, they can shut your car off. Well, you're not going to be able to drive your car until you pay this bill. It's kind of like the same thing that the state does. If, uh, what is it? You get caught driving with no insurance so many times, they suspend your license so that you can't drive now suddenly. So now, not only do you have to pay fines and whatnot, but you have to find another way to work or not work, not get the money to pay the bill, and now you're screwed. It's just more and more ways to tighten the screws down on society from my perspective, from my viewpoint. Tighten the screws down a little bit more so that people feel the squeeze. Make life so much more convenient and then all of a sudden take that convenience away. What are people going to do? They're going to scream for help. They're going to beg the nanny state to come in and save them. And then they're going to be good, docile little slaves, little servants. They're going to be grateful for any piece or crumb that the system will throw at them. That's my viewpoint of how these things work and how they're going to play out. AI. Wonderful convenience for some folks. Whatever they're doing in their lives. You know, I mean... For me, it's not a wonderful convenience. I don't use it. I stay away from it. I think it's stupid. And I mean that in every sense of the word. I think it is stupid. All right? Reason being, why do folks, especially children who are in school learning, why do they need something to do the work for them? That's why That's why the, the people you see on the internet these days can barely spell or barely put a sentence together in a comment. They just don't know how to do it. They don't know how to spell. They don't know L-O-S-E from L-O-O-S-E, T-H-E-R-E from, you know, all T-O-O from T-O, you name it. They just don't know. And this AI shit isn't making it any better. It's making it worse. And it's just going to get worse and worse until people are just basically illiterate. They're going to need to carry around a nanny state in their pocket just to be able to communicate with other people. There'll probably come a time when no one's going to be able to talk right. Because I mean, even now, there are certain groups of folks that speak English But it's not the English I speak. It's not the English I'm speaking right now. It's not plain, simple English. No. They come up with, make up imaginary terms, imaginary slang. And it's like you can barely understand what they're saying. Now, they may understand it in their little community that they're making up this language in. 
But when you got to communicate with other people, how's that going to work? It's not. So there's just so many things going on, folks, that show you what the path is that society is being directed towards. Another thing I would like to bring up, and I know a lot of you folks are not a fan of hearing this, but for me, from my viewpoint, the single greatest mind control mechanism ever set into motion was monotheism. And by monotheism, I mean any religion that worships one God. I'm not saying that's any better than polytheism or any other type of theism, but monotheism, I'm basically referring to the Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, Islam. Single greatest mind control, psychological operation, uh, operation ever implemented. Because you get folks to believe that they need to suffer here for a better life over there. That they need to put their, you know, that everything that happens is God's plan. And if things go wrong or something weird happens, oh, it's God's plan. If someone goes out and is a rapist and a murderer and a pedophile, For all of their life. And then they get caught one day. When they're, I don't know, 70 years old, they get caught. And they get sent to prison for their crimes. And then they repent and they accept their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Guess what? By a Christian's logic, that pedophile is going to be able to be standing in heaven right next to the, the children that they raped. What sense does that make? What logic is that? What justice is that? That's what I'm saying. You see all these folks arguing about religion. Why do they argue? Because it's all based on opinion. When you can get someone to believe in something that they cannot prove materially, you can get them to do anything. That's a lot of the psychology of how they send people to war and get them to kill other human beings and commit atrocities without a blink of an eye. You're doing it in the name of God. In the name of your deity. In the name of Allah. It's Allah's will. You can't question Allah's will. Do it. There you go. Single greatest control mechanism ever implemented. I hope I can get some people to think on that one. Out of anything I've said here today, I hope that's the one thing that will get someone who at this point in time right now is a Christian, a Muslim, or a Jew and gets them to think, wow, there's something to that. Maybe I need to dig a little bit deeper on why I believe what I believe. Because it's all, from my viewpoint, it's all predicated on fear of death. You get people afraid of dying, they'll pretty much latch on to anything to stay alive. Whether it's some mysterious, weird virus going around that's killing people, and it's like, well, oh, you need to get... Uh, 267 jabs over the course of a year and you need to wear this diaper and you need to stay 6.66 feet away from each other and you can't have more than 6.6 people over your house for a holiday gathering or you're going to (laughs) die. You got to wear a mask all the time. And when you walk into a restaurant... When you sit down, you can take the mask off because it's okay then because the virus, for some reason, does not attack people sitting and eating. All right? It just doesn't. But the minute you stand up, you better put that shit back on. (laughs) 
Oh, all right. This has been fun for me because I've, I've basically got to talk about a lot of things that have been on my mind of late. Um, going from the AI to the electric vehicles to convenient services that we have. And it all comes down to one thing. What do you want to do? It's your choice. You can choose to do whatever you want. Because contract is by consent. I once asked a question like not too long ago in the live stream. I said, authority comes from basically two places. One is consent and the other one. And then I said, it's up to you. I'll leave that to you to figure out. And what I mean by authority comes from consent is if you follow what you're told, you are consenting to someone's authority. Or something's authority. If you just do what you're told. You're consenting to authority. Someone having authority over you. The other type of authority is when you are the author. You are the author. And now you have author iti. Authority. That's how it works with correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. If you have closure under grammar in the postal mechanics, grammar mechanics, banking mechanics, flag mechanics, so on and so forth. You create your document contract, postal vessel court venue. As the author, you have authority over that document. That's yours. Like me, I am a document contract court authority. Um, and that's about how it works. You know, it's very, very simple logic. But this authority, this, this, I'm going to bring it back real quick and then draw it to a close. I'm going to bring it back to the religion thing. If you get your rights from an authority, like a, a God-given rights, well, you have to be able to certify that authority. Because to me, that's an assumed authority. If someone tells me that, it's my God-given right to do this, that, or the third. It's like, well, okay. Show me who gave me those rights. Prove the source. Okay? Because there is no such thing that you can prove. Now, the government can give you rights if you consent to it. That's why I don't participate with this thing called rights. Because it comes from an authority that you consent to. And I do not consent to any of that. Any of it. That's legal fiction system hogwash. A lot of folks can't wrap their heads around that. A lot of folks need to believe in some imaginary, all-powerful being. And when you call them out on it, man, the cognitive dissonance gets real. But that, that's a topic for another podcast. I could go on for another 23 minutes just talking about that. Which maybe I will. Maybe in the next one. Thank you for joining me.